What is Rumi's source of joy? How does Rumi describe his relationship with God? What strength does this spiritual joy and loyalty provide Rumi? What lessons does he teach us about trust and inner strength? Today, we examine Rumi's verses to find out. The joy Rumi speaks of here is not worldly and thus fleeting or externally dependent. It's a spiritual joy, a constant presence in his life, a pact he has secured. For Rumi, true joy comes from an inner state rather than from worldly conditions. Rumi implies that joy is not merely an emotion, but a spiritual commitment. By forming a pact with joy, Rumi hints that maintaining happiness is a conscious choice rooted in his spiritual practice. The poem also assumes that the Divine Beloved is eternally devoted and intimately close to him. Implying that Rumi sees himself as inseparable from the Divine. Reinforcing a Sufi belief in the union with God. The phrase, the beloved will always be my soul, suggests that Rumi's very existence and identity are anchored in this divine relationship. That his self is not separate from the divine. Instead, his soul is a manifestation of the divine beloved. For Rumi, true identity arises only through this unity. This poem suggests a worldview in which spiritual connection transcends the ups and downs of everyday life, hinting at an ideal state where one's core remains unaffected by the external factors. By establishing an unbreakable link to joy and the beloved, Rumi implies a detachment from worldly concerns and challenges. His happiness is rooted internally, free from the sway of the external success and failure, promoting resilience as he remains in harmony with joy and the divine, regardless of life's difficulties. Next, Rumi tells us that following his loyalty, his Sultan has issued a command that he will be Rumi's king forever. Here, Rumi speaks of the Sultan not as an external ruler, but as the ruler of his heart. No matter what happens around him, as long as his heart has faith, it will never bow to another power. He remains bound to the Beloved, immune to any other force. In the following line, Rumi says that whether he is sober or drunk, his only anchor is the Divine. This loyalty isn't simply admiration. A devotion so deep that Rumi even dismisses his own injuries, knowing that his beloved will be there to heal him. Imagine living with this level of trust in someone. How many of us can let go of doubts so completely? Now, Rumi introduces another layer to this relationship. He describes a fierce loyalty and dedication that stands against any threat. To him, the beloved is not just a source of comfort, but a fortress. A protector of his inner kingdom that dominates his heart, not allowing random thoughts to enter. The metaphor of the heart as a city under the Beloved's watchful guard reveals a critical point. The fortress that love builds within him is impenetrable. Here, Rumi is saying that random thoughts, the worries, the doubts, the temptations are powerless against a heart truly fortified by love. Can you imagine possessing such an unshakable power and peace? This is what Rumi invites us to consider. Rumi's poetry also challenges us to confront our fears. He sees the beloved as his reason for being fearless. 
his reason for finding joy even when everything else fails. نبی ند روی من زردی به اقبال لب لعلش بمیرد پیش من رستم چو او دستان من باشد. His reference to Rostam, a legendary figure and hero in Persian poetry, highlights the strength he feels from the Divine Beloved. To him, even the mightiest warrior would be humbled in the presence of Divine Beloved's love. But he doesn't end on a note of pride. Instead, he turns inward, seeing himself as deeply humbled, always at the mercy of his Beloved's grace. So for Rumi, true joy is an enduring inner state rooted in his unbreakable connection with the Divine Beloved. This spiritual joy, free from worldly concerns, reflects a conscious commitment. Rumi's identity is intertwined with the Beloved, providing resilience and harmony, allowing him to transcend life's challenges with unwavering happiness. Rumi leaves us with a challenge and a lesson. In this life, can we find that level of trust, of happiness, where even in our weakest moments we know we are not alone? Rumi's poetry doesn't just romanticize love, it paints love as a force capable of transforming our greatest fears into sources of courage. Of changing the way we face difficulties. How would all this shift our perspective on what it means to truly trust? If you want to learn more about Rumi's illustration of how love works miracles, historical miracles, I invite you to watch this episode. I also invite you to join our weekly Rumi reading group, where um, scholars and people who are interested in, in Rumi poetry gather, meet over a video call and analyze his poetry. We translate, analyze and delve into deep layers of Rumi's wisdom. The link is in the description.